Now we will also have meta directors that we'll look at in a moment, but at the, at the time, all of these are orthopara directors. Now, do you notice something that these all have in common, except for the alkyl and phenyl? So, just to, you'll have to memorize those, but it, you can kind of ignore those for the moment. Do you notice something that all the rest of them have in common? Now remember my dark lines where we're connected to the aromatic ring. Just remember that. But what do all of these have in common other than the alkyl and phenyl? A lone pair, not only a lone pair, but a lone pair on the atom directly attached to the aromatic ring. That's something that all of these have in common, except for alkyl and phenyl, that's an exception. But orthopara directors generally have a lone pair of electrons on the atom directly attached to the aromatic ring. And that lone pair is involved in the resonance that we went through. So that lone pair can resonate into the ring and put the partial negative into the ring. So I went through the example with the OH, but all of those would work the same, except for alkyl and aryl, or the phenyl, alkyl and phenyl. All the rest of them have lone pairs, so that lone pair on any of these can resonate into the ring and put the partial negative, which activates the ring. It's going to send the next group in the orthopara positions. Now, the, out, the halides are a little bit different. They do have the lone pair that can resonate in, but it's fighting the electronegativity. So they're deactivating because the electronegativity is trying to pull electrons out. Resonance is trying to put electrons in to the ring, but the electronegativity is pulling them out, so they're fighting each other. Uh, so these wind up being weakly deactivated. But they're still orthopara director because they have the long pairs. So let me just go back real quick. I had that hybrid up there a moment ago for the activating group. I'm just going to put an A there for the activating group. And we have partial positive on it, and we have partial negative out here. That was my activating group, and all these are activate, these all are orthopara directors. See why we go orthopara with all of these. So if my electrophile comes in and here and reacts to my substituent, here is the ortho, these two are the ortho, here is meta, and here is the para position to my substituent. So see why they want to go ortho or para. There's partial negatives on those carbons. My electrophile is attracted to the orthos and the para positions. That's why all of these are ortho para directors. Now, let's take a look at some other substituents. Let's look at moderately deactivating. Some moderately deactivating groups include things like a nitrile, a sulfonate group, a carboxylic acid group. An ester group. Wait a minute. Dr. Selby, you're messing me up. Just a moment ago, 
you said the ester was moderately activating and now you're saying it's moderately deactivating. It can be both. What's the difference? Look back at my, look back at your notes there. Moderately activating. What's the difference? Look at what's attached to the ring. I don't have the lone pair on the atom directly attached to the ring. See, my lone pairs are out here. Here we're attached through the carbonyl, so it matters how you're attached to the aromatic ring. Here the carbonyl is attached to the aromatic ring. Before it was the oxygen that was attached to the aromatic ring. So we're connected differently. So yes, it can be either. Same thing with the amide. It can be deactivating if you're connected to the carbonyl. Uh, some others here, aldehyde, uh, ketone. Okay, so all of those are moderately deactivating. Lastly, we have strongly deactivating. Strongly deactivating. This is things like a nitro group. An ammonium cation. CF3 group. And a CCL3 group. All of it, all of those are moderately deactivating. I mean, strongly deactivating. Sorry, strongly deactivating. Now, the groups that I have up here, all of both of these, the moderately deactivating and the strongly deactivating, these are meta directors. They will tell the next substituent to go in the meta position. Do you notice anything that these have in common? So all of our ortho pair directors, at least the majority of them did, had a lone pair on the atom directly attached to the benzene ring. What do these have in common? Let me just draw out the nitro group there. If you notice on these, on the atom directly attached to the aromatic ring, all of these either have a partial positive or a full positive. Matter directors have partial positive or a full positive on the atom directly attached to the aromatic ring. Okay, I am out of time. So we will stop there for today. I'll pick up there tomorrow and we'll actually look at some examples of using these. Now this order that I went through is going to be very important. You can already go ahead and, you know, I know some, some of you got lab tomorrow, you got to study for that, but um, the rest of you, go ahead and be studying on this. You need to learn this order. I went through these in a specific order and that order is going to be important. Okay, last time we were looking at activating groups and deactivating groups. We looked at ortho para directors and meta directors. So let's apply that to some problems.
so here we are starting with toluene is a common name for that starting material. We're doing a nitration. We've got nitric acid and sulfuric that will put a nitro group onto the ring. And the group that's already on there directs the next one as to where to go. The alkyl group, the methyl group, being an alkyl group, this is an ortho para director. And it's going to tell the nitro group as to which position to go to. So it says to go ortho and para to me. So ortho to the methyl group, these are the ortho positions. There's two ortho to the methyl. Here and here would be meta to the methyl. And finally here is para. Now, the nitro group could go anywhere, but the major products are going to be in the ortho and the para positions. And this particular reaction, I happen to have the numbers, so I will let you know exactly where everything goes, uh, the percentages. So we get some of the ortho, and it doesn't matter which ortho position you go to in this example. There's symmetry through the molecule, so it could go to either one. You'll also get some para. And we'll also get a little meta. Now again, the major products are the ortho and the para. You're going to have very little of the meta. And as I said, I happen to have the numbers on it. We only get 4% of the meta. So the major products are the ortho and the para. We get, to, in this particular example, we get 59% ortho and 37% para. Now, these ortho para directors, I'm not going to have you pick which one is the major between those two. So, if it's an ortho para director, just say you get a mixture of ortho and para. Statistically, we should get more ortho because there's two ortho positions and only the one para. So, statistically, we should get more ortho. But, because of sterics, you look at the ortho, now we're starting to get groups bumping into each other. They're right next to each other, so we could have sterics. Depending upon the size of those groups, the bigger they are, the more steric problems you would have. And then you get more para when you have a lot of sterics. This one, the groups aren't that big, so it's not the steric interaction is not too bad. But if they were bigger groups, then you're definitely going to get more para. So, as I said, I'm not going to have you pick because, you know, looking at the size of the group, you know, you don't really know until you go into the lab and actually run the reaction and, and measure the amounts as to which one is really going to be more, ortho or para. So, again, just tell me you get a mixture of those two. You can see we're not going to get meta. There's basically nothing on the meta. Uh, that's, again, because the alkyl group is an ortho para director. So we went through last time as to why that is. Your ortho para uh, directors always put partial negative on the ortho and the para positions. So our electrophile is attracted to those positions because of the resonance that we went through. Let's look at another example. Here we have an ester and let's do a, we'll do this time we'll do a sulfonation. So we need to determine if that's an ortho para director or if it's a meta director.
So as we mentioned yesterday, you want to look at the atom that is directly bonded to the aromatic ring. Only look at the atom directly bonded to the aromatic ring. The majority of the ortho pair directors had a long, have a lone pair on the atom attached to the benzene ring, to the aromatic ring. The only exception to that was the alkyl groups and phenyl groups. They're the only ortho pair directors that don't have a lone pair. All the others have a lone have lone pairs on the atom directly attached to the benzene ring. So this is an ortho pair director. So it's going to tell the sulfonate group to go ortho or para to this substituent. So we'll get a mixture of the ortho and the para as the major. Here is the para, and we'll also get ortho. So I'll just say plus ortho. And you're welcome to do that on the exam as well. Just draw me one and say plus the other. Again, I'm not going to have you distinguish between the ortho and the para. So that's the major is the ortho and the para. So we have sulfonated in those positions. Do one more. Let's do a halogenation on this one. Again, it's the substituent that's already on the ring tells the next one where to go. And you're looking at that atom that is directly bonded to the aromatic ring. Our carbon here that's directly bonded to the aromatic ring, there is partial positive charge on that carbon because of the resonance. We can take the electrons up onto the oxygen in a carbonyl. So if you have a partial positive or a full positive on the atom attached to the benzene ring, then that is a meta director. So it's going to tell the bromine to go in the meta position. So here is our ortho positions, here is the metas and the para. There's symmetry in the ring, so it doesn't matter which meta we go to. So esters can be, I did an ester in both cases, esters can be both ortho para directors or meta directors depending on how they're attached. If, they, if we have the oxygen attached to the ring, then we have the lone pairs, so then it's an ortho para director. If your carbonyl is what's attached to the aromatic ring, then it's a meta director. So some of these groups can be both depending upon how they're attached. Questions on this? Now the last one I want to put up here in this section before we go on. This one here I'm going to use three equivalents of the bromine. In this example, the amine here, this is, a, this is an ortho para director, but it is a strongly activating group. For the strongly activating groups, 
the Lewis acid catalyst is not required. With all of the others, you have to have the Lewis acid catalyst. But with the strongly activating groups, and only the strongly activating groups, the Lewis acid catalyst is not required. Now it won't hurt anything to put it in there, but you don't have to have the catalyst for the strongly activating groups. So yesterday we went through strongly activating, moderately activating, weakly activating, and all of that. So only for the strongly activating. That group is making, is activating the benzene ring, is making that aromatic ring more reactive than a plain benzene. And it's activating it so much that it will react without the catalyst. Now we're doing three equivalents of bromine here. This being an ortho para director, I have two ortho positions and we have the one para. And we're going to brominate all of those. Since I have three equivalents. And we get essentially none in the meta position. Of course, this byproduct, I haven't been shown the byproduct. We get HBr, we get three equivalents of HBr. It is an electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we substitute the hydrogen, so that's where the hydrogen winds up, making the HBr. But we can get by without the catalyst if we are using a strongly activating group. Like I said, it won't hurt anything if we put the catalyst in there, but it's not required. Okay, let's look at our next section. Any questions so far? Let's look at directing in di-substituting benzenes. equivalent of bromine here. I'll go ahead and put the one out so you make certain you see that it is one equivalent. Now, as we've been doing, the substituent that's already on the ring tells the next one where to go. Well, we've got two on the ring. The amine is an ortho para director. So it's going to tell the bromine to go ortho or para to me. So here is ortho to the amine, and here is para. Well, we can't go para because there's something already there. It could only go ortho. There's already a substituent in the para position, so I can't put another one there and be breaking the octet rule. But. So the amine tells the bromine to go there, but the methyl says it's also an ortho para director. And it says, I want you to go ortho or para to me. And so ortho to the methyl, I'll put those here in red, there's ortho to the methyl, and here is para to the methyl. Well, we can't go para because there's already a substituent there, but it could go ortho. So we have two potential products. 
we could go ortho, again, to the amine, or we could go ortho to the methyl. So there's my two potential products. We got to decide which one is the major. Which one do we get? Now, for these, we went. I went through that list yesterday, and I said that list of the activating and deactivating groups, that the order that I went in was important. The amine here is a strongly activating group. The methyl group was weakly activating. Now, which group do you think is going to win? Should be obvious. The strongly activating group will beat the weakly activating group. The amine is going to win. It's going to tell the bromine, go ortho to me. I win. That's going to be the major product. So this is our major product. The methyl group is just weakly activating, so it doesn't have much say. So we went through that list yesterday, and I said that the order was important. So the more activating groups beat out the less activating groups. So we had strongly activating. We had moderately activating. We had the weakly activating. And then we had weakly deactivating and moderately deactivating and finally strongly deactivating. Now, that order is important. The strongly activating beats everything. If there's a strongly activating group on there, that is going to beat everything. You can only, you only beat what's below you. We can look at, if we had a moderately activating group on the ring, it will beat all of these that are below it. A moderately activating beats weakly activating, beats weakly deactivating, beats the strongly deactivating, beats anything below it. The only thing moderately activating can't beat is the strongly activating. So you will beat anything below you in this list. You can't beat anything above you. Uh, another example. If we have a group that's moderately deactivating. The only thing that it can beat is a strongly deactivating group. So moderately deactivating, that was like a carbonyl group. Carbonyl can beat a nitro. Nitro was strongly deactivating. But that carbonyl can't beat anything else. You can only beat what's below you in this list. <clears throat> so that will help us to determine when we have two substituents or more, you could have more on the ring, you want the one that's the highest here in the list, and that's the one you go with. said the more activating groups always win
So let's look at another example. these different because I had both of them modeled yet deactivating. Okay, let's take and do a we'll do a halogenation here. I'm not gonna no I would not put something that's in the same group because then you're not gonna know I mean you wouldn't know which one would win. So there needs to be a difference in their activity. So if you look at these, both of these are meta directors. This is a meta director because there's partial positive charge on that carbonyl carbon. The CF3 group, there's partial positive on it. It's also a meta director. So this carbonyl says go meta to me. Here is meta to that one. here. The CF3 is also a meta director and it says go meta to me. Here's meta to the CF3. Now that carbon, the carbonyl is moderately deactivating. The CF3 is strongly deactivating. So of those, you want the more activating group, or in other words, the less, if you're dealing with deactivating, the less deactivating group will win. So the carbonyl wins here. It's higher on that list that I gave you. The carbonyl is going to win. So the bromine is going to go meta to that carbonyl group. That's the one that wins. That will be our major product. These strongly deactivating groups can't beat anything. They're at the bottom of the list. Strongly deactivating never wins. They always lose. Questions? Let's put up one more thing to do. So the substituents here, you want the more activating to win out. Let's look at what if we have multiple benzene rings. A halogenation here. Now, the ether is moderately activating. It's going to say go ortho or para to me. So ortho to it is here. Para is here. Can't go para. I already have something in the para position. So again, this is an ortho para director. There's lone pairs on the oxygen. moderately activating. The nitro group, it is a meta director. It is strongly deactivating. But it's saying, I want you to go meta to me. Here is the meta position to the nitro. That would be meta to the nitro. Which ring is our bromine going to go to? There's two aromatic rings there. How do I know which ring it's going to go to? Hmm? 
the one that's more activated. The nitro group is deactivating this ring. What does deactivating mean? It means it's making that ring less reactive than a plain benzene. This ring is less reactive. The, the methoxy group was moderately activating. In other words, it's making that ring, an activating group, makes the ring more reactive than a plain benzene. So you're going to go to the more activated ring, the more reactive. That activating group is activating this one. This one is deactivating that one. This one's less reactive. This one's more reactive. So you're going to go to that more activated ring. That will be your major product. Now we do have a um, kind of overlooked here. The nitro wouldn't even have a say to start with. The nitro is deactivating. Here attached to this ring, we have a phenyl group attached. Phenyl groups are weakly activating. Weakly activating beats the deactivating anyway. So the phenyl group would tell, if we did go into this ring, it, the phenyl group would be telling it where to go, not the nitro. Of course, they wind up being the same. Ortho to the phenyl would be the same as meta to the nitro. But anyway, the more important concept here is you want to, if you got two rings and you got a choice, you want to go into the more activated ring. That more activated, again, makes it mean that it's more reactive than plain benzene. Okay, questions on that? We are next going to look at reactions of benzene ring carbon side chains. look at halogenation of the benzylic position. So we're going to look at aromatic rings with a carbon side chain coming off. Here we have a propyl group hanging off. You could have a methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, some carbon side chain. So that's what this section is all about. be reacting with MBS. MBS stands for Imbromo succinimid. There's the N, B, and S. Imbromo succinimid only brominates 
the benzylic position. Where is the benzylic position? The benzylic position is the position the carbon connected to the benzene ring. This is the benzylic carbon or the benzylic position. So MBS only brominates benzylic positions. They're not going to brominate somewhere else. They will brominate a benzylic position. So our product, we get a bromine on in the benzylic position. If you use one equivalent of MBS. If we were to use two equivalents of MBS, And we can put two on. 